Hello, it's time for another trio of domino placing exercises. We'll start with the easy pips, see how it goes. Oh, interesting, we have a completely linear puzzle today. So one goes into, yeah, one goes into the nine. We have a four that finishes that. We have a zero that goes to the three and then a zero to finish the three. And this is all forced. There we go. There's the easy puzzle. Let's try medium pips. Okay. Um, we've got an equivalence region over here, which will be either double one, double two, or double six. Oh, we have three, three equivalence regions. So yeah, six, 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 two, 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 and one, one, one. So we'll, we do have a fourth two available to us. Okay, so how do we bridge this? So we, we're going to need, yeah, so this equivalence over on the right can't be sixes, because if it were sixes, we'd have a three half going into the two region. So that doesn't work. Um, could it be the ones? Yeah, it could be the ones or the twos. Where could the six go? The double six, I mean, which one could that fit into? Could it fit into the, into the middle one? If it fits into the middle one, yeah, I guess the I guess the third six could simply point up. No, it actually couldn't point up. And it couldn't point, because then we would, we'd have an odd number of cells left over on the left side of the grid and we wouldn't be able to fill them all. So it, would have, it couldn't point right because then we'd be pointing into a one and it would be too big. So we'd have to point left into that six. Then we'd need another three coming out of this. No way, that doesn't work either. Right, okay. So I think what that's telling me is that this middle equivalence region must be pointing right. So we need an equivalence that can go into a one. Okay, that, that actually, that concludes it because um, there's only one set of three numbers that will allow us to point over into the one and that's that's the twos so the two twos go there and then i guess we either have two two one or two blank pointing into the one i'm not sure which actually um and we know this well we, we know the six can't go over on the right because we've already figured that out so it must be the ones that go over on the right so then we've got a one going into the two, the two going into the one, the two blank. Yeah, there we go. So that's how this works. And then that means our double six goes over here. Our six, three goes here and our three, five goes there. I think we might've been able to swap a few of those two, two, one blank dominoes. Those might've been able to be in a slightly different orientation, but this is basically how it worked. And uh, we'll move on to hard. Let's try this and see how it goes today. Whoa, 63. I think this is the biggest region I've seen both in number of cells and total quantity, you know, total value, definitely the biggest we've ever seen. Well, we can immediately put the six over here because that's the only possibility. And actually the two double zeros must go here because those are the only zeros we have access to. So that that's fine. Wow, this is bonkers. Okay. Um, right. How many cells are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plus six is 15, plus one is 16. Okay, so we have 16. Uh, we've already used five. So there are uh, 15 cells remaining that create a total of 58. So this is essentially an arithmetic problem. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound very appealing. Um, right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what on earth? Um, see, this is a case where, can I move these around? I can't move these around. This is a case where I would love to be able to move the dominoes around so that I could start tallying up a total and marking for myself, which numbers I've already used. It's, it's very frustrating that I can't do that. Um, we know the ones are spoke. Okay. I guess what I do is I add up the totals of all of these dominoes. I know that eight plus plus two from the ones are spoken for. So 10 are spoken for, we have one more blank. So we'll therefore be able to tell what number must go in that blank cell. Okay, so I'm gonna add these up in my head. Let's see. Um, so 12 plus six is 18, plus eight is 26, plus, uh, what did I say, 26, plus seven is uh, 34, plus eight is 41 plus six is 47, plus six 
is 53, plus 7 is 60, plus 10 is 70. So we need 70. We've already put 5. I think I've done this wrong. I think I've added these wrong. This doesn't make sense. Minus that is 65. Yeah, this doesn't... I've, I've done it wrong. Sorry. Oh, this, this must be intolerable to watch. Okay, so we've got 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 6 is 18, um, plus 8 is 26, plus 7 is 33, plus 8 is 41, plus 6 is 47, plus 6 is 53, 53, plus 7 is 60, plus 10 is 70. Right, so we have 70 there. We need 58. So we need a total of 12. Minus 8 is 4. Minus those 2 is 2. Okay, so it's a 2 that goes here. Sorry, in case what I it just sounded like number salad that I just said. What I did was basically figure out the total number of pips to which we have access and then subtracted the 5 or rather subtracted from 63, the total fill here, subtracted that five. So really what we need is, is 58 to fill these. Then I just figured out, you know, I removed the number of pips that are already spoken for by these other labels. And then the difference between that and the 58 that we need was two, which means it must be the number that isn't contributing towards the 63 total. So that's, that's all that was going on there. Okay, so I think everything else is just a matter of getting it into the grid by any means necessary. Um, because it doesn't really matter where any of the pips go. All we have to do is fill these various regions. Um, so that's it. I think these just go in anywhere. This is probably the most diversely solvable pips that's ever been published. Um, th there must be hundreds of different possibilities of how you, they could go into the grid. And there we go. That's it. So th this was really an arithmetic puzzle today. That's all, that's all it was. It would have been maddening to try and solve this without doing some amount, I think, of addition and subtraction. All right, well, there we go. Oh, and someone said, could I please show the puzzle at the end? Yeah, that's a good point. So um, so they can examine it. But that was an interesting one. I don't want to have to do that every day, but but it's fine. As a, It's an interesting idea for a PIPS puzzle, and it, and it was sort of intriguing to work out how to solve it efficiently. But uh, let's not let's not do that again tomorrow in that exact form. Anyway, those were the pips. Back tomorrow. Bye for now.